In addition to the slope, in order to specify a line, we need to say where the line is. One popular way to say where a line is in the coordinate plane is by describing its intercepts. So I'm going to draw a line. Here is a line in a coordinate plane. What are its intercepts? The x-intercept is the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. So this point right here. This point has x-coordinate negative 2 and y-coordinate 0. y-coordinate 0? Yeah, that's always the case. Why is that always the case? Well, it's because the x-axis is all of the points with y-coordinate 0. So if the graph is touching the x-axis, that must mean that the y-coordinate is 0. Y-intercept is the same thing other way around. The y-intercept of the graph is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. In our graph, it's this point right here. So what are its coordinates? The y-coordinate is positive 1. Right here is positive 1 on the y-axis. What's the x-coordinate? Well, it's 0. The y-axis is just all the points whose x-coordinate is 0. And therefore, the x-coordinate of the y-intercept is always going to be 0. If we're on the y-axis, the x-coordinate is 0. If we're on the x-axis, the y-coordinate is 0. As a matter of fact, this gives us a convenient way to find out the intercepts of an equation. So here's a line. It clearly crosses the x-axis somewhere, and equally clearly crosses the y-axis somewhere. But neither one of those points is on nice grid lines. If we wanted to find out the x and y intercepts of this graph, we need to write down its equation. To write down the equation, well, we observe that the slope goes right to down 3 starting at this point, 1, 1. And so the equation in slope-intercept form is y minus 1 equals negative 3 halves x minus 1. All right, so negative 3 halves, that's negative 3 over 2, that's the slope. y minus 1 is y minus this y, x minus 1 is x minus this x. Now to find the x-intercept, we set y equal to 0 and solve. So when y equals 0, we have 0 minus 1 equals negative 3 halves x minus 1. Let's see, I'm going to write this as plus negative 1 so I can distribute more easily. On the left, I just have negative 1. On the right, I have negative 3 halves x plus positive 3 halves. I subtract 3 halves on both sides and get negative 3 halves x equals, using my calculator, negative 1 minus 3 halves, that's negative 5 halves. And then dividing both sides by negative 3 halves, we get 5 thirds. So our x-intercept is at x is 5 thirds, y is 0. To find the y-intercept, we do something similar. We set x equal to 0. And so we have 
y minus 1 equals negative 3 halves times 0 minus 1. Working out the arithmetic on the right, y minus 1 equals positive 3 halves. Add 1 to both sides and we'll get y equals 3 halves plus 1 is 5 halves. So our y-intercept is at x equals 0. That's what we started out with. y equals 5 halves. Both of those seem like plausible coordinates for those points, right? If I mark thirds on the x-axis and I count out one, two, three, four, five thirds, that seems like it's about that point where I intersect the x-axis. Along the y-axis, if I mark halves and I count out one, two, three, four, five halves, that seems like it's about that point where my graph crosses the y-axis. So what I calculated seems plausible. Would I even have needed the graph to come up with those points? Well, no. I could have just come up with those points by plugging in the zero values and solving the equation. Why did I work from the graph this time? So you could see what those solutions really represent as points on the graph.